Well, folks, another special guest on my show here today. It's a guest from back in the 1960s. This was a TV series from the 1960s, of actually 1964 to 1966. The name of the series, The Monsters. The gentleman we have on our show today, Butch Patrick. Welcome to our show, Butch. Thank you very much. Well, Butch, indeed. Uh, it's been a, lo a long time since the 1960s. Uh, the, uh, there's been a lot of life in between there. We'll try to talk about, a little about your 60s and what you're doing today. Uh, do you wanna, let's just start with the 1960s. Uh, you were on a TV series uh, known as The Monsters. How did you uh, get that role on The Monsters? Well, I had started working in 1960, and The Monsters came along four years later. But in that four-year window, I had done a lot of guest starring roles in uh, various TV shows, um, Intouchables, Ben Casey, Rawhide, Bonanza Gunsmoke, and many, many, many more. But I did two series. One, I was on the first year of the General Hospital soap opera, uh -huh. still running today. And then I did the last year of The Real McCoys with Walter Brennan and Richard Crenna. And that was the, uh, the show that my agent showed them footage of that uh, when they were looking to replace the Eddie that they had um, cast, that the networks uh, wanted to change uh, the, the child and the mother from Joan Marshall named Phoebe to uh, Lily Munster and Yvonne DiCarlo. So that was, I was living in Illinois with my grandmother at the time, and then Mary Grady, my agent, got them to um, fly me out for a screen test, went directly to the studio and uh, tested with Yvonne and, and got the job. All right, cool, cool. And uh, with the role there of Eddie Munster, you uh, had a lot of makeup work with that. I know that uh, Fred Gwynn and Al Lewis uh, had a lot, along with Yvonne DiCarlo, had a lot of makeup. How long did it take to get your makeup done for your role? Uh, it wasn't too bad. It was an hour every morning with touch-ups throughout the day. The good news was we only filmed three days a week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, which, allows, which allowed us, you know, obviously the weekend and Monday and Tuesday to recover. Okay, and oddly enough, I've, I've also heard that uh, at times you, you would, uh, uh, when you had a little free time, I heard that you uh, at times visited the, uh, some of the sets on the Universal Studio. As a matter of fact, one of the sets I hear that's legendary that you visited was uh, the uh, Psycho set from uh, the uh, Alfred Hitchcock movie. Is that correct? Well, the Psycho set certainly was there, as was the Phantom of, uh, Phantom of the Opera soundstage, but my favorite go-to destination was usually uh, McHale's Navy's Lagoon. Oh, cool. uh, going Ernie and Tim, and uh, or go visit my my uncle who supplied horses to uh, Wagon Train and the Virginian or Laramie. So those are, and then I also enjoyed going up to the makeup department to see what Mike Westmore was making up in the lab. That was a, a favorite place. But the whole studio was um, at my disposal, so I spent a lot of time just roaming around, checking out things that were popping up and starting production wherever they may be. Oh my goodness, that's, I mean, that's, that's cool I mean, for sure for a child like 9, 10, 11 years old to get to see the whole uh, studio there and get to visit all those places and everything. Oh, well, okay, so you were on the, uh, night, the biggest part of your life was on the, on uh, uh, television was uh, the uh, Munsters. I'll ask you a couple of questions on the folks that were on the show and your reactions and maybe some uh, stories about them, uh, such as uh, Fred Gwynn. Uh, what was he like? Tall. Tall. <laughs> How tall Very was he? Tall. Uh, he was the level-headed one in the family. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> but the, in all actuality, him and Al Lewis, Fred and Al were quite a comedy team coming in from Car 54. And Fred being my TV dad, he and I, uh, they, we morphed into a lot of uh, uh, father and son shows. The producers and the writers had been leaving the Beaver for six years. So they were very kid-friendly, and uh, they found that. Uh, I could handle dialogue, and they thought that the playoff of me being so small and him being so tall, they could write some funny scripts to where he would never want to disappoint me, and he would teach me valuable lessons. And so there were a lot of father and son dynamics there that were good for me, and it was apparently good for the show. Whereas Al Lewis, who played Grandpa, um, he was uh, he had a little more free time, so he spent some time with me outside the soundstage, tossing a frisbee or a baseball, and teaching me a few of life's lessons that I, to this day, still carry on. So it was a good environment, and it was a, it was a good educational process, both uh, in front of the camera and behind the scenes. Then there was uh, Yvonne DiCarlo. How was she? Uh, was she a very, I mean, did she teach any big lessons of life? She was a big star. She was oh. like very, very powerful woman in Hollywood, and uh, she was a, a bona fide glamour queen from the 40s and 50s so being around her was wonderful because you got a sense of what old hollywood must have been like but as far as the tv mom she was wonderful she uh was very 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 nice she would bring her sons to visit me on the set because she knew that i was the only kid she thought that maybe uh 
to see Mikey and Bruce uh, would be nice. And occasionally they would come visit. So, yeah, Yvonne and I were very close uh, on the show. And then later in life, we, we reconnected as well. Mm-hmm. I was a surprise guest for her on a Vicki Lawrence episode. And after that, we, um, we reconnected. And uh, I was friends with her until her passing in oh. 07. Okay, yes, indeed. Uh, and um, more or less... I would say uh, after two years, I mean, uh, you uh, were there any special episodes that you just liked? Uh, one of the ones I thought was pretty funny was uh, where you, where uh, Grandpa compares you to Mitch Miller, where you grew a beard. I thought that was a pretty funny one. <laughs> I mean, the reference, I mean, certainly dated, but uh, I thought it was one of the funny ones where hey, it looks like Mitch Miller. Any uh, episodes that uh, were uh, stand out for you that were just fun to make? Well, the one you mentioned, Eddie's nickname, is a very good one because of the Paul. I love the Paul Lynn scene where they take me to the doctor and then Paul Lynn is popping tranquilizers because he looks up at people <laughs> and he, he, he says, imagine what his son must look like if they have to cover his head with a paper bag. And um, <laughs> the, uh, the Zombo episode with Louie Nye as the TV host, which you know I was enamored with that I thought was a real guy, was a very good one because of the, the nature of the behind the scenes of making the monsters. They showed a lot of the secrets that we used. Uh, that were applied to Zombo's set. And then uh, last but not least, I mean, there was there's several. I'll come back a little googie with Billy Moomy, but uh, Hot Rod Herman, George Barris supplied us with wonderful cars, the Munster coach. And then in that episode, he also created the Dragula, uh, of which today I have one of each and uh, allows me to do a lot of interesting, fun things throughout the country of an automotive, ma- uh, automotive nature because I grew up in the 60s and muscle cars and drag racing were all the rage. And it allows me to still carry on some uh, some hobbies that I enjoyed back then. Yes, so as you are older than the Monster Coach, I know that you travel around the country and everything that Monster Coach, so both the Dragula and Monster Coach, and, uh, and uh, uh, between the two, is there any, are they both your favorites or is one better than the other? <laughs> they're like, they're both, well, you know, the, the Dragula is probably more so because it's a, a legitimate dragster, you know, it can pull the wheels and we can go to nostalgia drags and do exhibition burnouts and stuff. The Monster Coach is uh, more, um, identifiable but it can carry more people and it's more of a family every day it's like the original minivan back in the day that could carry nine people um i also have a, a monster chopper as well so i like to do biker events i've done sturgis and laconia and daytona so uh either the coach in the trailer or the dragula and the bike in the trailer but either way whenever i show up i i always have something that the crowd loves that's cool uh, have you ever been down here too I, I hear that you have been down to mississippi and have you ever is it been a, just a visit or is it, have you done a show down here or, uh in, in mississippi or, or, or arkansas oh mississippi mississippi east mississippi, mississippi. I've, I've i've crisscrossed the country and i've been through mississippi i don't believe i i think there's a big car show down on the gulf coast uh in mississippi i know there's one in alabama cruising the coast mm-hmm. but uh mississippi i don't believe not so much I think we're going to have to get you down here. There's a in the May we have a real big uh, car show called the Blue Suede Cruise, and I would, would be, love it. That would be, we would need to get you maybe down here. We'll have to see about those folks for the Blue Suede Cruise. So your career went on after Monsters. You went on and did uh, I think uh, you did uh, obviously for some of the episodes like you mentioned. Uh, I think it was I Dream of Genie who appeared on one or so, or and so on and did some special um, uh, guest appearances, right? Yeah, the, the you know I went over to Disney. I did several Disney movies, okay. World of Colors, but uh, the Monkeys Christmas episode was one of my favorites. Um, oh, yes. It's- seven because the monkeys were very very huge and i had to spend i spent a week working with the guys um i did a movie for chuck jones called the phantom toll booth i'm very proud of that was chuck's only feature film movie uh based on a book written by um oh god uh, 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 ooh, i should know his name <laughs> anyway uh, norman juster excuse me norman juster wrote the book and uh it's a great book mandatory reading in a lot of schools so that was one of my favorites as well and then of course when i turned 18 the summer of uh, 71 i did sid and marty croft's um stage eight at paramount for lidsville i was there for the summer of 71 with charles nelson riley and billy hayes which was uh another witchy good poo. show she was also witchy poo on, uh, she was witchy poo. She was on uh, she was Weenie Genie in my episode, in my series, uh-huh. but she was Witchy Poo with Puffin Stuff, yes. HR Puffin Stuff. And, uh, yeah, that, I, I do remember that series. Uh, and that only lasted a year. I mean, it was like, uh, that was an offbeat. Uh, that's the best way to describe it. But it was, then again, it was the late 60s, early 70s, I guess. That's the best way to describe it, right? Yeah, yeah. Between, well, the 69 was Puffin Stuff, 70 was Bugaloo, 71 was me. Then uh, they went on to Sigmund for two years and then Land of the Lost and so on and so on. They have a, quite a body of work. Okay, indeed. So, okay, and uh, well, indeed, uh, what are your plans here for 2023? Any plans? Anything special? 
Plans for what? 2023. Oh, sure, of course. Um, you know, I'm putting together a, uh, a haunted attraction in Conway, Arkansas. Okay. Uh, a gentleman, uh, a few years ago, I was touring with the, the Stearns Pinball Company. They had made a Munster's pinball machine, very high-end one. And I went around the country and met several people that had arcades. One of them led me to Conway, Arkansas, and I took a liking to the area and the people there. So um, I'm going to be working down there. I still do my personal appearance tour. I've got a, a, a pilot that's being shopped as we speak. It looks like it's going to get picked up called Haunt Improvement. And it's about um, me and Tom Devlin, who's the master uh, museum. He's got a master, master monster builder and a haunt uh, creator who has a museum in Boulder City, Nevada called Tom Devlin's Monster Museum. And he and I are going to go on the road together to help people with haunts in need and uh sort of like um you know haunt rescue haunt improvement type of thing so i'm looking forward to that and then i also have another pilot with the called to toy scout which is uh going around the country and seeking out and finding those hard to find toys for the super collectors that are looking for um they kind of the holy grail of collectibles all righty well butch it has been a pleasure to have you on our show here and i wish you a lot of uh, luck in the future and uh, again you take it easy okay Munsters.com for all your listeners and viewers. If they okay. want to reach me, it's very easy to remember. It will take you to all my social media, okay. everything, all things Munsters as well. I appreciate you having me on the air. It's been great to have you. Take it easy, okay? Peace. Uh, peace. Take care.